Hello everyone, it's David from Automate Press and I have a one really exciting car today for review which is a 2023 BMW M2 and I know that the styling is somewhat controversial but let me go through my normal engineer's audit of the car including exterior quality, gap analysis, paint check and also interior quality check and we go for a drive and I'm going to let you know whether I like this vehicle or not based on my engineer's experience. Let's go. Welcome back. So I'm going to do this uh, kind of live stream style. So I'll try to tell you as much as I can about the car, but do it in a kind of natural setting. And if I make some mistake, I apologize in advance because I'm not going to edit this video too much. I'm going to tell you straight scoop as to how I really think of this BMW M2. A couple of interesting things to keep in mind. This is built in Mexico and not built in Germany. But as I will show you now, actually the quality is first class. I'm actually quite astonished at how good the exterior quality is and also the inside as well. So let's do our usual um, quality check here and check for the gaps, check for the alignment, and then also we'll talk about the paint in a second. But look at the gap. It's actually 2.9 millimeter here, 2.8, and yeah, 2.7. When was the last time I was able to show you a car that is less than three millimeter in gap between the panel? You know what? It's almost impossible. I can't even think of a car in the last 12 months that had a, a panel gap of less than three millimeter. This is better than Lexus. Now let's take a look here between front door and the front uh, fender. It's 2.9 also. And over here, more a little bit more normal here with a 3.2 millimeter. And all the way back here in the trunk, uh, also three millimeters so overall we're looking at somewhere between just a little bit under three millimeter to just over three millimeters so in terms of the panel gaps this is truly world-class beating out many many cars that cost twice or three times as much and like I said actually better than some and most Lexus models so that's surprising and if you can uh, just go on the side like this and take a look at the panel alignment You'll see um, how difficult this is to build this uh, stamping panel because this bulges out like this. Same thing over here, it bulges out. And more curvatures, the more difficult it is to stamp out this piece of metal and get it done right and still align all the edges like this. Here you can tell it totally lines up perfectly and there's nothing that's out of place when you look at it and kneel down. The panel looks like one consistent finish. Same thing on the hood. So in terms of exterior panel quality, I give it a solid A+. This is one of the best quality exterior I've seen. So it looks really good. What about the paint job? I don't have the paint thickness gauge today with me, but I'm going to examine this new color, which is called the Toronto Red Metallic. Not sure why they're calling it Toronto but uh, we're in Canada and I did live in Toronto for a while so we appreciate that uh, recognition but it's more like an orange than a red a kind of mixture and it looks really bright it looks great on this car it wouldn't be for me but it looks really good and goes well with the M2 design and M2 profile um, but the paint job has as usual uh, within BMW family you see more of an orange peel throughout here that's a pretty well typical European design uh, and European style of paint but the actual consistency of paint is really good the gloss and the clear coat looks good maybe not quite as thick as some other uh, Lexus model I've seen in terms of depth of the clear coat but it looks really good so overall I'm happy with the exterior now uh, let me go into the interior and talk about the quality but let me just uh, address one important thing which is the styling of this M2 because it's quite controversial and lots of people talk about this but you know what for some reason I love this design I love the squ squarish boxy looking design with the muscular um, bumps over here and also on the rear everything is square and rectangle here as well even here you can see the rectangle shape and you actually get the smaller grille as opposed to the big grille you see in three and four series models um, and also in the seven series and in the back as well you get quite a blocky design um, so obviously carrying some of the design traits from a two series but this is also really blocky you can see 
big blocks and another square looking design here also rectangle design here and more rectangles here and I know that this isn't for everyone but for whatever reason for someone who grew up in 1980s somehow this harks back to some of the older BMW design uh, especially some of the beautiful coupes that we had back in those days and to me this looks absolutely gorgeous and it's different but unique and I like it a lot. I think it's better looking than many other uh, BMW models uh, that we've seen in the last several years. So I like it a lot. But let's take a look at the inside and see how good the quality is. And then we go for a drive. So I'm inside the uh, M2 right now. And let me do the engineer's audit in terms of quality first, uh, because I really want to know if they built it right from the Mexico factory. Uh, and you know what? So far, it looks great. I didn't hear a single rattle or squeak while I'm driving. And I do my usual punch test here to see if anything is loose at all. And everything feels solid. But more than that, if you look at the quality of the materials, how everything comes together, I'm looking for gaps or misalignment of uh, any of the components. And look at that. Everything lines up perfectly. And um, all of the grain of the plastic looks good sometimes. They make this plastic too shiny or the grain looks very kind of fakey and they don't look right but here it looks just right just the right amount of matte finish and the stitching all lines up as well so i'm actually really impressed with the overall quality uh, of the interior as well as you know i was very impressed with exterior quality but from what i can gather there's nothing in here that indicates this might be built in mexico uh, because some of you guys are a little bit biased about cars built in Germany versus Mexico. But as far as I can tell, this is truly world class with a really good quality uh, material and fit and finish. And I think they've done a great job. It's, it's as good as it's you're going to get in terms of interior quality. Now in terms of uh, other things like ergonomics and basic uh, layout and so forth, I love the big um, infotainment system now. And it's also very up to date in terms of what you get. Beautiful um, design. This carbon fiber looks really good, well integrated. Uh, and thankfully we still get buttons. So we get buttons for the audio system. And of course this is a six speed manual. And I get some controls here, like for example, to change the level of noise coming from exhaust. But otherwise, um, unfortunately we lost some other controls like the climate control buttons have all been integrated into the infotainment system. So if I were to go in this infotainment system, uh, it works okay and it's actually quite responsive and everything is big, but it's not the most intuitive one because all these uh, columns of controls looks a little bit uh, busy from here. Otherwise, like I said, it's very responsive and uh, all of the other features are pretty good and nothing seems to be strange in terms of um, uh, the actual control system. I can adjust a variety of different um, features of the chassis, the steering and the brake because I can pick if I want comfort or more sport or even sport plus. So I can configure a lot of stuff. And these buttons here, M1, M2 can also be configured to provide you with a customized uh, functionality uh, in terms of how much of a performance you want to be built in. So all that, that's good. And the actual ergonomics of the steering, the distance between my body and the actual shifter is also good. Yeah, it's not a super functional car because the center console is obviously pretty small and the cup holder is a little bit small, but who cares? This is a car for performance and for driving pleasure, not necessarily for functionality. I do lose a sunroof because I have a carbon package here with a carbon roof. So if you want a sunroof, you might not want to pick that carbon roof. And uh, also uh, because of the fact that the carbon package comes with these carbon seeds, it's probably not something you want to pick because it's just so hard to get in and out. So once you're in the seat, it's very supportive and perfect for maybe uh, tracking on the weekend. But as a daily driver, this is just so awkward to get in and out. I can never ever recommend the bucket carbon fiber sports seat for those people who want to use this as a daily driver. So now I'm inside the BMW M2 and driving this vehicle and this is where it, this thing truly shines with a very agile character, flat cornering, 
and immense power and torque coming out of a turbocharger, six-cylinder engine, because this one has one of the best engines in the world. There's no question that very few manufacturers can match the performance and the feel of this amazing engine inside the M2. And basically, if you're buying M2, then you know that you're getting perhaps the best engine in the world. But at the same time, this vehicle is not an ideal day-to-day -day car because the Michelin um, Pilot Cup 2 tires are pretty stiff. And suspension is also pretty stiff, so you feel every bump on the road. It is pretty smooth on a smooth pavement, but right here, as I'm driving over some rough pavement, wow, you feel every, every crack and every uh, bump on the road. And so uh, you might not enjoy that as an everyday car, but if you're looking for a pure performance vehicle that you can also track on the weekend, then obviously this is ideal. You kind of have to decide what's the right uh, type of vehicle for you. If you don't want the stiff ride and uh, somewhat uncomfortable seating configuration because of this carbon fiber seats I have, you might want to consider a normal two series with a performance package that might be more suitable. <laughs> you can see my head tossing quite a bit over a bumpy road. But of course, uh, the M models is, are the one that offers the ultimate performance. So if you want the best of everything, the best performance, the best handling, the best cornering, you still have to go for M2. So I'm a little bit mixed now. It has a really smooth uh, shifting as well. And the engine is just beautiful, as I mentioned. But I'm not quite sure that I would pick this as my daily driver. Uh, I would definitely like to have this as my Sunday or weekend car or a car that I want to take it to the track. Um, but maybe not a daily driver vehicle because that would be a little bit tricky to do uh, in this particular setup just because it's so stiff and so bumpy and in the case of this carbon fiber package makes it very difficult to get in and out and so those are some of the compromises that you have to decide whether uh, it's acceptable to you uh, and 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 or whether you want to decide to buy a different two series model and not the m2 so as i begin to conclude i'm a little bit torn because this is a beautiful machine with amazing performance uh, and it's going to give you lots of uh, driving uh, fun character and you know what, you'll never regret buying this if you want ultimate performance and maximum performance. But at the same time, if you are looking for something that you can use all the time for a variety of different functions and different reasons, then it's probably not the best vehicle for you just because it rides so stiff. So only you will know whether M2 is the right vehicle for you or if you want to consider some other variations of a 2 Series or maybe even move up to M3 or M4 which I think has a slightly better ride overall just because they're a bigger vehicle. And those are some of my concluding remarks. I hope you find this video helpful and meaningful. Yeah, if so, please give me a thumbs up and also make some comments and that'll be truly appreciated. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.